everybody what's going on it's bb here bb aka middle child you know they didn't change my name well today i am here i have the pleasure to have mr cream dot from the bx what's up you know my hometown y'all what's up mr dot man aka dot man how you doing everything's well the pleasure is all mine everything's well i'm just out here grinding you know what it is how you doing I'm good. Welcome, welcome, and thank you so much for coming to the Artist Corner to tell your story. I met you a long time ago um, through a mutual friend, and come to find out we have mutual friends, and I know you've been on your grind and you've been doing your thing for a long time. I've been watching your page, watching your music, and just excited to have you here. So what's going on? What are you doing now in your music? What, what, what's, what's going on now? Well, as, as of uh, the latest, oh yeah, shout to the shout to our mutual friend, shout to our buddy, shout to Coach Cheese, by the way, before I even get to the end. Yes, yes. That's love. Those are the homies. But um, as of currently, I've just been working, you know, um, definitely staying busy musically. Um, I've been doing music for a while, but I've added a couple of things under my belt. I actually shoot videos now as well. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, like, you know, that, done like a, a little web series you've been doing. So I've been doing some film. I've gotten to the filming part as well. But the music is, is deep in my blood, so that's never, the bars is always going to be like, it's going to come to the forefront of whatever I'm doing. But currently, the two projects I have, I have a mixtape out right now that's called um, My Mom Want to Sing, But I Rap Better. That's currently on Audio Mac. It's doing a little number, so I definitely want y'all to uh, go check that out. Just like I said, just type cream dot K R E E M D O T in the space bar. That's going to pop up. My Mom Want to Sing, and I Rap Better. That's a uh, nice mixtape I got on right now, Audio Mac. But I'm actually going to be talking to you about the album that I'm dropping that's dropping on Halloween. It's called Don't Hit the Like Button. So that's the most current Don't Hit the Like Button. I want you to get into that. Okay. I like that. That That's hot. That sounds, I like that uh, title, Don't Hit the Like Button. And so this is coming out on Halloween. This is a, a collaboration. It's an EP. Where, where is it going to be? What platforms are you going to have it on? Yeah, this is it's a, this is actually a, a album, ten track album. You know what I'm saying? I, I think the current like as the, as we've grown the listening, I think the listening span has has shrunk. So you know, guys used to make classic albums that could have 15 to 20 songs on it. So this album, I decided to shrink it a little bit. It's just ten songs, mm-hmm. ten fire joints. You know what I'm saying? But it's definitely a full album, and it's going to be on all digital platforms, platforms, uh, iTunes, Apple. You know what I'm saying? Spotify and all the rest. So yeah, it's going to definitely it's going to drop on Halloween and um. I'm excited about it. How long have you been working on a project? This particular project, you know, it is a mix of songs that are actually done as long as a year ago. You okay. know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm always recording. Like some of the songs I've done as long as a, as a year ago. I've got so much music. I got, I got a long catalog. Uh, one of my slogans is I got more songs than pop because, you know, I'm a veteran. I'm doing a long time. You know, I pop had an ex- exclusive, extensive catalog. I just got a lot of music. But this particular album are current songs that I've been doing, say, like, uh, the oldest is about a year old. And I'm just like, I've been constantly recording, even throughout this whole pandemic, the uh, COVID thing, still getting into the studio with my man, you know, keeping our distance. I'm in the booth. He's uh, in the engineering room. That's and we doing what we got to do. So, um, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just just working this year to make this pop. Yeah. Well, listen, you got to had to keep busy in this pandemic. You got to find a way, you know, or you'll go crazy. So how did you, let me just, uh, so what started your musical journey? How did you start out? Well, you know, just being a fan, being from the Bronx, the South BX, just being a fan of the music, you know what I'm saying? Going back to artists like, you know, uh, that we love lyrically care of us, when the Big Daddy Kings, the Rock Kings, you know, that's every, that was like really the lyricist that inspired me to get into it and stuff like that. And of course, as all the artists have, have come along, just being a fan of the game, you know, the Jay Z, the Biggie, the Nas, and stuff like that. But the origin, you know, just being a fan of the game, you know what I'm saying? Of the breakdancing, graffiti. You know what I'm saying? And MC and stuff like that. I've definitely started as a young teenager, just started dabbling with lyrics. And you know, as, as you play with it, you learn to love it and it just stays with you as you get older and you kind of take it seriously eventually, which I did at one point. I mean, well, I'm doing it now, but you know what I mean? Started to take it serious after playing with it 
for so yeah. long. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to have come from the Bronx and not love hip hop. I mean, even like when I grew up, me and my girlfriends, we like, we thought we were going to, we should have been like the salt and pepper. Like it was hard not to love hip hop. You know what I mean? Like it, it coming from the Bronx, it was everywhere. Definitely. Uh, that's a great point. Like, I mean, we from the origin. So, you know, even going back to like the forefathers of it, like the Grandmaster Clashes and the Cool Hurts throwing jams up on Cedric and stuff like that. And I'm from the South Bronx, Patterson Projects, Patterson, Marhaven section, yeah. Marhaven Projects, you know, it was always was jams and stuff like that and MCs and, you know, b-boying and stuff like that. So yeah, it was in our blood. If you're from the Bronx and anywhere else, but especially the Bronx, it is definitely in your blood. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I grew up with it. I didn't even know like she was a rapper and I used to hang out with her all the time, Sha Rock. And I was like, oh my God, like one day I realized she rapped like she was so humble and she didn't really talk about it. I didn't even know. And you know, yeah, I, I you, you couldn't help but love it. I grew up with Raheem from Flash and the Furious Five. He was a singer and he inspired me. So yeah, it's uh, you gotta love hip hop, you know. But what was your like first show like? Like the first time like you got on stage and you like, I'm doing this. What was that like? Actually, let me um, segue into what you said before I even go into my first show. It's funny that you mentioned Shy Rock. She was down with the uh, legendary pioneer group called um, Funky Four Plus One More, right? <laughs> yeah, so it's funny that I have a relationship with the original Jazzy Jeff, you know, the original Jazzy Jeff, not the, you probably know, you of course, you know, not the Fresh Prince Jazzy Jeff, uh -huh. the original that was down with that group, but some of my history, a journey that we'll get into, but I just wanted to segue being that you mentioned Shy Rock, I actually had a little deal with him, a little right there with the uh, original Jazzy Jeff years ago, he had a studio downtown, and I met him through a mutual friend, you know, Zulu Nation and all the guys from like that pioneer era, that guy that kind of always supported my music, introduced me to Jeff and I actually had a little situation with him. And I got to meet a couple, a lot of the old school cats, you know what I'm saying? The pioneers, like uh, Down the Rock and uh, Cold Crush and a lot of guys and stuff like that. And I think I probably met Raheem too. And I think I met Shy Rock because they always on this album that uh, was supposed to, supposed to come out. And I was doing some, oh, I met Curtis Blow, of course, Curtis Blow, which was a privilege of mine, and a couple of uh, uh, more current artists at the time. But it's funny you mentioned that. I just wanted to share that. That's yeah. part of, part of my journey, which I'm gonna tell you. It led to another part, which we're gonna get into. But um. But what was now, your first show like? Your first a uh, show that you knew like I'm gonna be an MC. I'm doing this. What was your first show like? It's funny. I definitely remember this. I think probably my. It was either one of my first shows or my very first. Probably not my very first, but probably my second. Mm -hmm. I've had a partner, my man C Lord. He was partners at the time, and it was a show that we did up on um. It was like a, a high school, a junior high school up on Portland Avenue. They had like kind of a little talent show. Mm -hmm. And we had a little group and we had this song called Who Wants to Battle. I never get it. We had a song called Who Wants to Battle. And it was a couple of other groups from the area that went up there. And I, I never forget we had the response we got. You know what I'm saying? When we, because we was, we knew we had skills or whatever. You know, you're young, you know, you got skills or whatever. But when you get in front of people and do your thing and they respond, that kind of like drives you more. So it, I think that was probably the first or the second one that I was like, oh, nah, this is us. This is what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this the adrenaline, it got you hooked. Yeah, that's that's what's up. And so from there, you went on, tell your story. Yeah, well, like I said, from then, just, you know, you got to start writing. I've been, like most probably uh, guys that still do it, been part of groups, been solo and part of, so I've been a part of a few groups and stuff like that. But um, going back into kind of my journey after the Jazz and Jeff situation, I told you, I've actually had the pleasure of meeting um, Guru, you know, legendary group, Grand Gangstar, DJ Premier. I'm the head yeah. Yeah, Guru, that's my God bless the dad. You know, he's no longer with us. But anyway, um, to make a long story longer, I got to meet Guru who was doing some writing for the project, whatever. I had the relationship with Jazzy Jeff, wound up getting the relationship with Guru and I had the privilege of signing to Guru's Ill Kid Records. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, so it, that was probably like uh a real highlight of my career, you know. So that was kind of like before. Everything kind of going got crazy. Guru started feeling ill and stuff like that. It was like before all that happened, right before that happened. It was funny, but um. Anyway, so I met Guru and um. You know, had to deal with him and it was on the combination album that he dropped called Ball Head Slick and the Click. That's still out in stores. If y'all want to go check that, hey. Guru, yeah, absolutely. Guru had so many projects he was doing. Everybody's familiar with the Jazz Mataz uh, projects he used to do with the jazz artists. You know what I'm saying? And then right. also, right. I remember that. Yes, I remember that because um, an artist that I was working with named Caliber Six, he, uh, I think, did a co collaboration with Guru. 
I used to go to this studio. I think it was on Park Avenue. Um, and it was a studio he always went to. I wish I could remember the name, but I, I don't remember. But he always used to be there. He was so nice and so kind. We always used to get in some type of confusion about which studio we were going to be in A or Studio B. But he was always like, um, he's just, I used to always just run into him in a hall or whatever. He was really, uh, really, rest his soul. He was really a nice man. But yeah, he was a genuine dude, but like I'll never forget him. He definitely gave me the opportunity as, as you know, as a younger artist, just coming up in a great, you know, having somebody, because, you know, even, you know, even I met him, he was already established. Like, he was a legend when I met him, you know, said it's more about 10 years ago, more now, but still, you know, it's definitely more than 10 years. I'm talking about, you know, this is earlier part of my career. Mm -hmm. So he was a legend then as far as him and Premier had hits and stuff. So for a dude like that at that time to believe in you, you know what I'm saying, and want to sign you, it was it was a beautiful thing. So. I was on that compilation album and I got the tour, you know, we went on tour and stuff like that. And I was signed for a couple of years and it was like kind of like the real height of my career. And I know I'll never forget him for that. You know what I'm saying? For giving me the opportunity. That's a nice you know? story. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that was kind of my journey. And, you know, and after that, you know, like I said, once you're signed with somebody, as much as you love them, once things are not going the right way, you, you're trying to, you, you want to, you know, change your route get go another situation. I had another independent situation that I decided to go with rules. My man was like, yo, go do your thing. But we always remain mm -hmm. that that close relationship. But then unfortunately he got ill like a year later after that, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, the rest as we know is history. But yeah, man, I love him. R.I.P. Guru. So, you know, since then I've just been grinding, you know, dropping mixtapes, um, doing videos, directing videos. Got a couple of mixtapes out. The one I told you about is just the most current, you know what I'm saying? But um, that brings us here. So don't hit the like button, drop it on Halloween. That's, that's <laughs> all that brings us here. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you got you got a whole lot of stuff, you know, going on. That's that's years of music. And that's the beautiful thing about music, it's always alive. It's, it never dies, you know. You can take Absolutely. something like that and revamp it and you know, and that's that's the beautiful thing about music. And um and it's nice to see like because it is, I know it's out there like so many artists in the Bronx, period. Just like yeah. still doing their music and still pushing hard, you know? And um, we need that, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, it, the game is, you know, so funny too, people always talk about how the game is flooded with, you know, the bubblegum rap and things like that. I mean, there's good music out there. There's any kind of music you want to listen to out there. You just have to go find it. And I know they make it easy for you to get the bubble gum, you know, saying in the mumble rap, so to speak, because it's playing on the radio every day. But there is music with content and more solid music that things that I'm making. You know, I make the fun music and I'm talking about all the fun stuff and black stuff, but I also have more content because I'm a veteran, you know, because I'm not doing these new these new dudes. But people just gotta get in tune because it ain't nothing but bars over here. Right. Nothing right. But bars, baby. Yeah, but you're right. And and people don't know as I um interview all these artists and um like i was telling you earlier most of them are like out of town they love new york and they respect new york rappers and they're like so hyped that it's just like a new york setting you know and Definitely. it's just love like it's, it's so much love and and like you said i haven't had a, a mumble rapper yet you know um because sometimes they don't want to do i don't know but i haven't had i had artists like come on they are like artists and they are pursuing their careers hard and that's what it's about and that cannot be lost you know that just cannot be lost because it's real we don't we don't always have to listen to everything they push on the radio i i promote the artists and people say you do i promote the artist because i feel like we need to see that i can't wait till my platform grows larger and i'm always for other platforms because I feel like it needs to be out there. Not to say all these artists that I interview, they doing their own thing. You know, they, they got videos, everything. But it's it's important for other people too to recognize it, you know, and, and support it because shit, it's real, you know? <laughs> it is. And like you said, you know, people, you know, they play the party songs and the songs about girls and stuff like that that's on the radio on the radio all day. Like I said, there's other content that's similar, you know what I'm saying? Maybe on a more underground level, but that's just as good or better. So I was just saying that there's a mix and there's just more content that you would find off the radio, obviously. But um, yeah, man, so there, there's a whole uh, whole bunch of music out there. People just got to go get it, you know what I'm saying? And and, and I, I'm trying to just bring, what I'm bringing to the table is just definitely a different style, a more, you know, saying lyrical 
uh, swaggy. So, so you you probably heard something similar to it, but you ain't hear how I'm bringing it. That's all I got to tell the people. Okay, okay. I okay. got I got to listen to more of your music now. Pre um pre pandemic, were you um do you guys still perform a lot? Are there places you could perform in the Bronx? Like you know, when I grew up, it was a lot of you know showcases and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, even like say pre pandemic, there's probably been a few shows that uh i was supposed to be involved in but you know I, it kind of fell through on me like with the performance i'm doing so much recording and as i said i've been kind of working on the film doing videos and um i was doing the web series that's a, i have a web series out let me actually segue for this uh roses in the concrete black roses in the concrete jungle which is on youtube as well roses actually i'm sorry roses in the concrete jungle so that's the, the web series that i filmed we got about five uh episodes up so you know anybody gets a chance you can check that out what is that about? What is it about? What's the concept? What is about? The concept without about, you know, of course it's related to music because you know it, it's in the DNA. It was about some guys that's just, you know, kind of struggling in the street through the trials and tribulations that want to do the music, but you know, they're stuck in their environment and they have to they're doing whatever they have to do to um to survive, you know what I'm saying? But uh they're really trying to pursue music and just, you know, make their make a better way. You know what I'm saying? So um it's you know that's basically the segue of what's going on. So it's an ongoing series. It is, you know, it's, like, it's it's kind of on hold right now because I said it's it's five episodes up right now, but we haven't, you know how you know how things is. It is it's so difficult when you're working on stuff like that because you have to deal with people, a bunch of people. When you know, said so once people have uh, playing a certain character through three or four episodes, you need them to continue to be, you know, what I'm saying who they are, and everyone has lives. You know, we're not getting paid for this, so, you know, that's where the, com the complexity comes in with doing web series and stuff like that. People got to really be tied in and be focused to see it through for if we was planning to do a season, you know what I'm saying? So that's where I'm at right now, kind of just, you know, people have lives and I, and I, and I respect it. So it's kind of on hold right now, but uh, there are some great uh, episodes up that people can check oh, out. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna check yeah. what out tonight. That's cool. So, yeah, I'll definitely, you know, send you um some links offline, once, you know, something like that. Okay, so we go, so let me ask you something else. What inspires you to keep doing what you're doing? It's just, it's just, I think it's, it's a love for it. Someone like myself, it's just a love for it, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, being that, you know, I've kind of definitely been doing it for a while. And, you know, you tell yourself, you know what I'm saying, that you roll a dude. I've had my successes, like I told you about the brew. I have my successes and I've had my phase of times when you grind and you can't really get that to that point or someone to that level to notice you again to give you the opportunity you want. But it, somehow you just keep doing it. And I say, I'm you doing it right now for the love. And like the game right now is like all about, it's it's you don't even need a label right now independent is really the way to go being that i'm a vet i'm not really even looking for a deal i would put my album out you know what i'm saying you no know saying promote it the best way i can and if someone was to come in the situation is right but that's definitely not where i'm at with it but you know just staying with it it's just it's in the blood when you love something when it's a passion it's almost like an artist someone that's that's been painting since they've been young 10 years 11 years old and they're still painting they get into their 30s and they get into their 40s they're still painting because they love it so I equate that to doing music. It's something you love. You're just going to continue to do it. Oh, yeah. It's in your system. I get it. It's like you get bit. You get, it's almost like drugs. It's like an addiction. You get, bit. <laughs> you know, I'm bit. I know. I know. I'm like, I love all entities of uh, music, you know, and um, I'll be doing music related stuff until I can't do it anymore, you know, so I get it. And, and the inspiration is just the music itself sometimes, right? Exactly. It, 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 exactly. Just the music itself, just listening to it. You know, like, you know, I'm, I'm such a chameleon too. You know, a lot of dudes, you know, uh, guys that are kind of like on my plight of the music, they always critiquing the younger guys that don't really get with it. But I'm like, yo, good music is good music in its own way. It don't have to be something that's lyrical that we're used to. It's not going to be the Rock Kim, the Big Daddy Kane. It's not even going to be a J or a Nasus or Biggie is kind of. But you know what? I appreciate this good music, good tones, and a kind of Good con everything is not good, but I'm just saying, I think a lot of the music now gets critiqued more than it should. There's a lot of good stuff out there too. Might not be as lyrical, but it got bouncing. They just got a different style, man. You got to respect each generation. Each generation, there's good stuff and there's bad stuff. Right. So I just think, you know, there's a lot of good stuff within this generation too. These young, yeah. these young guys. Yeah, even like the mumble rappers, like they got a style, they got a flow, they got a bounce. You know, I, I say you're right. Every generation, when we came up, they thought we were crazy. Like, what is yeah, yeah, definitely. What is this? Like, I don't play in my house, you know. Is so yeah, every generation different. You know, it's something different. Yeah.
Yeah, but a lot of uh, the artists that um, that like I'm seeing, you know, they stick into their originality. You know, I it, it's so original that that's what I love so much. Like it's just originality. I had a guy on the other day. He's from he was he's from India. He's in India, and it was just, it brought about a whole different sound. And he was just so delighted because New York people would get to you know, hear him and he, he'll get to like, listen to New York people. It, it was just, listen, it, it's a beautiful thing. Music is life. And um, I'm so glad yeah. so many artists that don't give up and, and feel like I don't really need a major deal. I can do these platforms make it, you can be all over the place now. Yeah, you can. I mean, you know how to market yourself and stuff like that. And people always talk about uh, people who are paying for this online, paying for this. I'm like, is it uh, marketing? There's a such thing that's called marketing and promotion. So, and I'm not saying this, you know, pay your career away, but you know, the the hype when people always talk about somebody, you know, buying views of per, per se on Instagram or on Facebook. You know, if you have a fan page or something like that on uh, Instagram or Facebook, they give you that option because it's called marketing and promotion. And if it happens to boost your views, it, it does just what it's supposed to do. So that's it, it, it's, it's a weird thing within within this within that getting you know on now with the independent thing. But you know, people got to just respect marketing and promotion because you have to spend money to to make money. Yeah, you know? and the thing about this marketing today, you have to really do your homework. Like you have to really, really know what you're doing. Like even like the platform we're on, it's it's an okay platform, but it's so many behind the scene things that go on with this platform. So you have to know, you know, what you're doing and what you're spending your money on. You know what I mean? Because. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, everything deserves it, but whatever your budget is, but I, you know, going into that, I would say you definitely have to spend money to promote yourself, especially if you're independent, you know, and like an artist like me, I don't, you know, they have like, uh, I guess subsidiaries like empire, you know, they used to, maybe used to be Koch. They used to distribute a lot of independent guys' music. Now, a lot of independent guys go through Empire and stuff like, you know, which is good. But, you know, artists like myself don't have that. I have, you know what I'm saying, myself and maybe a few people around me that have helped me put certain things in place. You know what I'm saying? But it's really all independent. And, you know, if anything bigger comes with that, cool. But it's all about just creating some content, some different content for the people that, that love it to, to listen to. And having your creative control. Oh, definitely 100% creative control. Like I said, I do my own videos, by the way. You know what I'm saying? I've definitely, I've got a couple of videos um, out right now. I got one video, so you're talking about the, the project for, for the album, Don't Hit the Like Button. I got a video called I Like Your Style featuring Nigel Onassis. That's on YouTube right now, so y'all can check that. Okay. Um, I got, there's a couple more. I got some videos for the uh, mixtape as well. Let's go, like I said, let's go to, let's go to my uh, my YouTube, dot, dot man TV. You'll see a, a bunch of stuff up there. But, um, yeah, just working. Just a lot of stuff. And that's the listen, brother, you are doing a lot of stuff and all good stuff, you know. Yeah. I'm gonna follow you and I am going to um make sure that I put your information in the link below and I just actually you have your people log on and subscribe, you know, to listen sure. to you. And um I, I just more power to you. You know, I appreciate you for coming on the show and telling your story because this is what this platform is about and this is what it will always be about is just tell your story i don't um youtube you know you got to go through all these copyright things so i don't really put people's music on display i'm going to do another show when i will be doing that but um for right now i just like artists to just tell you know tell a story because you'd be surprised there's people that want to know your story yeah, absolutely and it just gives you you know what sometimes you don't get the uh, tell it in a way when you're not on these larger platforms where someone can actually you really get to tell some of the things that you've been through or some things that inspire you and this gives you the opportunity to so opportunity to do that so what you're doing is um is great and it's gonna blow you just continue to do what you're doing yeah i continue i try not to get involved in the numbers because i you know i get such a great feedback from mm -hmm. so many artists that that's the reason why i'm doing it i get like a, a, a crazy feedback so yeah i'll continue to do it i love it as long as they love it and you know i feel that um i just feel that it's important you know it's important to support support the culture the culture that i've been in forever i've been a singer i've been a producer i've been a manager I've been, exactly you know. <laughs> right. we just find our lane just still fitting in staying busy doing things we love being a part of the culture that's all we're doing we're just being active within the culture that's all. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Well, Mr. Dot Man, I so appreciate uh, you coming on the show, telling your story. 
that's what's up. This is what I do. And um, hopefully when this is over, I tell all the artists, I know that I'll be doing some type of artist showcase because it's just so many artists. I have to. You know, Definitely. I to Definitely. The pandemic is quiet down because, you know, I'm social distance and I don't go too many places at all. And uh, just what it is right now, you know, I don't feel like it's going to be forever. So, you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, you definitely do that, um, Tommy. And, and um, middle, middle child, you know, I, I appreciate you, Middle Child. I just let the people know they can find me, uh, follow me on Instagram. Um, I have actually a, a real music page called It's the Brain Child, you know what I'm saying? So I have a page at Dot Man TV. I have some music and stuff up there. But if you really want to follow me just for the music uh, and see stuff like that, it's at It's the Brain Child. And uh, on Facebook, y'all can follow me at Dot Man Fan Page, not fan. That's F A N Fan, F A M, because ain't no fans around here. It's nothing but family. Yeah, right. Okay. Fan Page, and on YouTube, y'all can find me at Dot Man TV as well. So you know, just look out for that album. Don't hit the like button. Drop it on Halloween. We definitely going to be looking out for it. And I'm going to put your links where people can um, go to your pages. Because like I said, people watch from all over. You know, I get like people like, I watch your show. And it, I, it's just amazing to me. And they watch other artists, you know, and, and it gives them inspiration. So yeah. I thank you. And I so appreciate you. I wish you luck in all your endeavors. And hopefully we'll be doing something together you know, live. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. No, definitely looking forward to that. Like I said, whenever the middle child, just let me know and uh, it's on. I appreciate you. Oh, it's no problem. And you have a wonderful evening.